Hello guys, welcome back, Old Graphics here. In this video tutorial, we're gonna turn basic line drawings exported from SketchUp into this awesome collage type illustration only using Adobe Photoshop. So the first thing to do is export your file into basic line drawings. You can use either JPEGs, PNGs, or in this case, like I am doing, PDFs. Also, don't forget to choose the right perspective, so go to camera and activate the parallel projection. So all the work is going to be done in uh, Adobe Photoshop because we're not rendering or anything like that. Then drag and drop into Photoshop and resize and position like so. You can hit Ctrl T to activate the transformation box and holding Alt you can resize from the center. Now this part is up to you. You can either delete the lines that you don't want to uh, show in the drawings or use masks to hide them. And also don't forget to organize your file. It's very important to do this at the beginning so you don't get lost afterwards. Here I'm dividing between plan and section. Also, this part is really important to get rid of that SketchUp look. You can recreate some parts using a soft brush to get more depth. And also, don't forget to fill in any lines that didn't come with the base file. And as you know, the process and workflow of this type of image, actually any type of image, illustration, or rendering, it isn't linear, so try everything you can, and if it doesn't work, go back and redo it. In this part, I'm testing backgrounds and foregrounds and uh, what color or lines. You saw that later, I'll change the lines to white uh, with a darker background. And the key here is to blend in the plan with the section sky. And there are some things that are easier to do in Photoshop. For example, I'm redoing this uh, bottom C line to make it more organic. After you're done cleaning up the base file, we can move on to texturing and inserting 2D graphics such as people and vegetation for this specific example. You can often uh, find any texture with a simple Google search, but for to the cutout people, I really like to use the Mr. Cutout website. You can access with the first link in the description if you would like to. This part actually isn't really hard, you just gotta find the perfect cutouts to insert, and if they have backgrounds, don't forget to use the magic one to delete it. see there are some parts in the section that are in the uh, foreground you just have to cut and paste into a new layer and change its opacity to to make that blending a little more and the cool thing about this type of illustration is that you don't have to do everything in 3d you can for example live to do this rail this handrail in Photoshop using just a simple brush and it actually doesn't have to be perfect and that's the cool thing about it it adds up to the the whole texturized and dirty uh, look that we are trying to achieve in this image so this next step you just gotta create a basic uh, square grid using the edit define pattern and apply to a background layer afterwards just reduce the opacity to make sure it blends in a little better and also I like to use masks to achieve that effect that we were trying to do earlier uh, with a, the same sky of, of the section creates the, the plan. And then you can overlay a concrete texture and change the blending mode to multiply. And now this part is really important. I realized that uh, white lines compose much better with the gray background. So all you gotta do is invert, invert everything or just paint it white. Uh, there, there are many options to do that. 
then we're gonna do uh, the water texture it's going to be very subtle uh, you can copy and paste the same texture and use the healing brush you can reduce the seams in the texture also make it black black and white then after that use a mask to blend in the water into the section sky and make it very very subtle and finally we can start adding the shadows And the main thing here is not to like show specific steps of each part. It's more to like how you compose an image like this, the workflow, the process. So as you can see, I've changed the, the tile floors to white lines. And there are many, many options to do that. You can either like Ctrl E to invert everything or just repaint or, or maybe import again. But anyways, if you have any questions on how to do specific things that I didn't like mention or you just saw and didn't get it please comment down below and I'll gladly answer all of you alright so now I'm just adding uh, the trees as you can see um, I create a lot of layers to match the desired shadows and highlights of the image it is very important to know how to use the blending modes such as like overlay, multiply, soft to light. Now that we already have the basic composition, it's a matter of adding more details, more lines, textures, drawings, maybe like the this handrail that didn't show up in the plan, or maybe a, a bike sign in the the bike path. As you can see, I'm just refining some some edges, some little details. Uh, it really depends of the size and scale of the thing you're gonna maybe print or show up in a board presentation. Uh, it is really up to you how much time you wanna put into any drawing, you know. So by this time I realized that the white was standing out from the, the whole composition and I wanted to apply a cloth texture. Uh, so when I went and dropped it in and just copy and paste within the same layer and applied a mask just using the, the white selection. And then I changed the blending mode to multiply and play with the opacity so I got the best result. And then finally, after I got the whole composition and texturing all done, I went to get the right color to like match this monochromatic look that I wanted to give. So then I applied a gradient map using the adjustment layers to give this tint of blue in the, the shadows and a little bit of yellow in the highlights. So this image is almost done. You can add those type of shadows using a soft small brush and hold shift to make those straight lines. Also, I like to always create a new layer and change the opacity to something like 30%.
finally, as always, at the very last step, I like to use the Topaz Labs filter to give the whole image the, the contrast that it needs and, and punch in a lot more details and textures, you know? Okay, so if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you want to download the 3D from SketchUp, you should go to my Instagram. The link is in the description, and I'll put I'll post a picture of this video right there with the download link. All right. Thank you very much. See you next time.